is first before you lose there. But until you really optimize your whole fat burning process, you're never going to know. So let's do a recap because this is an important lesson. All right? and, and everybody has made this mistake at one time or another, some more than others. And I, and I see people on the machines who are doing this day in and day out. Of course, by attending my class, I know that no one in this room will ever do this again. When you eat food, your blood sugar is maintained for about three and a half to four hours. After that period of time, the blood sugar starts to drop. When the blood sugar starts to drop, the body thinks it's entering a state of starvation. starvation. When the body thinks it is starving, it protects itself by slowing down your metabolism first. And then the next thing it does, it sends a signal to your pancreas, which produces excessive quantities of insulin. The insulin then protects your body fat so that it can't be burned. And then when you try to exercise, you burn up muscle tissue. We've covered the low blood sugar spectrum. Let's talk about high blood sugar. High blood sugar is a result of eating too many foods that are high glycemic foods, okay, which tend to be sugars. When you eat foods with a lot of sugar in it, sugar is a, uh, is a common word for simple carbohydrates. Simple and complex carbohydrates. Simple carbs are called sugars. Complex carbs are called starches, okay? And now, if you were to look at a complex carbohydrate under a microscope, and I don't know why anybody would ever do that, but if you were to look at one, you would see this very, very long molecular chain made up of carbons and hydrogens and oxygens, carbohydrate. Right? And because this molecular chain is so long and complex, we call that a complex carb, all right? Those are starches. The sugar, on the other hand, the simple carbohydrate, if you looked at it under a microscope, it's a very short and simple molecular chain. So it's a simple carbohydrate. Now, here's the difference in the way those behave when they're in your body. When you eat the complex carbohydrate, the starch, the, the oatmeal, the potato, <coughs> those foods, because that molecular chain is so long and complex, your body takes a lot longer to break it down. It's a slow burning type of food, okay? And because it's a longer process to break it down, it converts at a slower pace into blood sugar, so it really works out pretty good in helping you to maintain those, those steady blood sugar levels that we talked about earlier. However, the other food, the sugars, the simple carbohydrates, when they're in your stomach, it's that real short, simple molecular chain, and those break down just like that, in the blink of an eye, literally. They go in your stomach, they break down immediately, and they assimilate directly through the wall of your stomach right into your bloodstream, okay? So when you eat a food with a concentration of sugar, such as a Snickers bar, you get this huge blood sugar rush, and it happens almost instantaneously. It happens within minutes. So your blood sugar, wherever it was, it might have been level, it might have been low, who knows, all of a sudden, right through the stratosphere. Now, when your blood sugar is high, your body sets off an alarm. Remember, the body monitors blood sugar 24 hours a day, always striving to maintain those steady levels. So when the blood sugar goes high, body sets off an alarm, high blood sugar alarm, your body then has to take corrective action. So, who knows what the corrective action is your body takes when the blood sugar is high? Right, well, your body sends a signal to your pancreas, which then starts producing excessive quantities of insulin. Powerful stuff. Well, one of insulin's other functions is it neutralizes excess blood sugar. So the blood sugar is real high, your body starts making a lot of insulin, and the insulin will bring those blood sugar levels back down. And guess what? you've got blood that's then full of insulin. And that insulin is traveling throughout your body, and it does what insulin does. Once it's there, it insulates your body fat. So the result of high blood sugar is pretty much the result of low blood sugar. You start producing a lot of extra insulin. Once this insulin is in your blood, it's going to do what it does. You can't stop it. So it goes to your, your body fat 
storage locations, and it insulates that body fat. And once you're in this state, you're not going to burn that body fat. So let's look at another example. Let's have the guy who uh, skipped breakfast trying to lose weight. Skipping breakfast. Lunch, salad, and a Diet Coke trying to lose weight. Gets off of work, feeling tired, feeling sluggish, and needs some food. You know what? I need a quick energy boost. I'm going to eat a couple of Snickers bars. So before he had those Snickers bars, how low was his blood sugar? Really low. So we had his Snickers bars. How high is his blood sugar? Boom. So the body was already producing a fair amount of insulin because that blood sugar was low. And now the blood sugar is high and the body's producing even more insulin because we've got to bring that blood sugar back down. And so now we've got blood that's really, really, really full of insulin and the body is completely insulated. This person's going to come to the gym and do that same two hours of exercise and the results are pretty much the same. Let's talk briefly about foods that are high in their concentrations of sugar. Because if we're going to try to keep an eye on those kind of foods, it's important to understand. We've talked about Snickers bars. What else? Tell me some other foods that are very high in sugar that we're going to want to keep an eye on. Fruits. Oh. Who agrees with that? And who thinks that if you eat more fruit, it makes you burn more fat? I've been told that before. It's not true. Okay, yeah, fruits are very high in sugar. I don't want to be misquoted, so, so please listen carefully. I'm not trying to tell you that fruit isn't healthy, okay? Fruit is loaded with, with vitamins and minerals and enzymes and all kinds of good stuff. So I'm not trying to say, ah, oh, fruit's unhealthy, and if you eat it, you're going to die. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, because of the relatively high quantity of sugar that is in fruit, if you are a person who has a concern for reducing your body fat, you have got to keep an eye on the amount of sugar in your diet, no matter where it's coming from, and that includes fruit and worse, fruit juice. Okay? Fruit juice is that's just downright evil. That stuff is worse than Pepsi, okay? How many people are regular fruit juice drinkers? Let me see the hands. Most of America is. And you know why? Because you've been told since you were in first grade that you're supposed to start off your day with a big glass of OJ. And if you watch the commercials on TV, the lady opens up the carton and the sunlight spills out. <laughs> How can you live without that, right? Okay. We want to get that sugar out of the diet. What else? We've talked about fruit and fruit juice. We've talked about candy, Snickers bar. What else is high in sugar? Dairy products, very interesting. Who agrees with that? And who thinks that you need lots of dairy products in your diet? All right, most people tend to say, well, I have to have my calcium. Yeah, calcium is important. There's lots of ways to get it. But dairy products are high in sugar. Lactose, that's milk sugar, OK? Now, if you drink an 8-ounce cup of milk, which is not very much, that's about the amount most people put on their cereal, it's, it's a very small amount. That contains 14 grams, 14 grams of lactose, milk sugar. What we would like to do through the course of our daily eating is we'd like to keep our sugar grams per meal in the single digits. Less than 10 grams. I mean, better yet, five or six or less, but, but if you've got 14 grams of sugar, Lactose in one cup of milk, that tells you that that's way too much. So for people, do you have a question? Is skim milk the same? Excellent question. Skim milk is fat free, which is it's, it's a normal response. The sugar. the sugar is the same. And that is important to, to note because people want to justify everything with, well, I drink skim. All right, the amount of sugar is the same. Skim milk is fat-free, granted. The amount of sugar is the same. So yes, dairy products, for the most part, are going to be high in sugar, and we're really going to have to keep an eye on them. So the, so the two golden rules that we've arrived at right now are, number one, we want to eat on regular intervals, three and a half to four hours. Okay? That's going to keep us from getting low blood sugar. And then to avoid the state of high blood sugar, we really want to keep an eye on the amount of simple carbohydrate, the amount of sugar 
that's in the foods that we're eating. I like to keep that in the single digits per meal.